this budget coming at a time when, you know, there are lots of challenges, uncertainties globally, also at a time when the world is facing the fourth industrial revolution, digital uh, challenges. Does the budget go far enough in addressing this issue and putting Singapore in place for the future? I think so. Uh, we are playing for the long game. Uh, the greater the uncertainties in the world today, the more we need to plan and have a long-term perspective. And this is why uh, we spend a lot of time in the budget talking about how we position Singapore in the new economy. Uh, so if you look at the uncertainties brought about by US-China, trade issues, uh, Brexit, slowing Chinese economy, what we need to do is to make sure that Singapore distinguish ourselves amidst all this uh, chaos. Could the problem be deeper than what we envision it to be? Because when you take a look at the latest numbers just mm. today, Korea mm. down 12% in terms of exports, Singapore a huge slump, and the same thing for Japan as well, down about, what, 18%. Could the problem be much bigger than we think? I think there are two sets of forces that we should be uh, cognizant of. One is the short-term forces, as we have discussed, the uncertainties brought about by the US-China trade conflict, Brexit, and so forth. These are what I term the short-term here and now immediate factors, of course, which we must be aware of. But I think there are larger forces at play that we should also be aware of. The pattern of trade uh, across the world is changing. Part of it is brought about by technology. Part of it is brought about by the geopolitical circumstances. And if you look at the traditional measures of the trade in goods versus services and even the emerging digital economy, I think that mix is going to change quite rapidly. So some of the numbers have to be interpreted in that larger context of how the entire global trading system, the entire production system and value chain system is shifting. Uh, one of the hot button issues in Singapore is foreign workers. And in the budget, mm. we saw a further tightening of foreign workers mm. within the services sector. Mm. Companies within the sector are already struggling following mm. the consolidation we saw earlier. Mm. Could the government be cracking the whip too much? No, I think we have done a very surgical move, uh, as you have mentioned, just on the services sector. And also within the services sector, we also make a distinction between different types of services. I think all this has started with the aim to make sure that the Singapore foreign manpower dependency is on a sustainable trajectory. We are not going to have an unlimited number of foreign uh, workers in Singapore, but what we have and what we want is a higher quality of foreign workers. So if you look at the pyramid of our foreign workers' uh, dependency, I think at the very top, the, you know, talking about the global talent in AI, in fintech, I think we remain a very progressive posture and we welcome many of them to come here, partner Singaporeans to create more opportunities for Singaporeans. But what we want is to make sure that we squeeze down the bottom, at the lower end, the lower value at lower wage foreign workers so that we are on a much more sustainable trajectory. So all this is for the long term. Under what circumstances would you ease measures putting a lid on foreign workers in Singapore? I don't think we run our foreign workers policy on a feast and famine strategy. In fact, we want to have a smooth trajectory where we can allow our firms to have uh, the ability to plan long term. And we will put in place various measures to help our firms to become much more manpower lean, uh, to have a much more sustainable foreign manpower dependency uh, system. We touched on trade slightly earlier. Are you concerned? Uh, are you more optimistic or more concerned now that, you know, uh, we're seeing a lack of progress between the talks in the talks between the U.S. and China? I think the U.S. and China have many issues to resolve. Uh, what you are seeing, what you're talking about on the about trade uh, frictions, those are perhaps just at the surface. Uh, there are wider issues that has to do with uh, the technology competition and even wider than that, perhaps the geostrategic competition. And I think uh, we have to watch the dynamics carefully and the results of the talk will very much uh, depend on the domestic politics of both US and China. I think what we are worried about is the mood in the US that seems to have turned uh, in their perspective towards China, whether they continue to see China as a partner, where the, both of them as the two largest global economy is there to uphold the global trading system together, uh, working with one another, or do they now see each other in a very different antagonistic light?
But the U.S. is now also taking on the EU as well as Japan with the auto tariffs. What's your take on that, and how difficult will the environment be? I think everyone in the global economy, be it U.S., China, EU, Japan, has to come together and decide. Do we want an open, rule-based trading system that has benefited us all this while, uh, for the last 30, 40 years, whereby the growth of the world's economy, the prosperity that has brought about the uplifting of the millions from poverty has come through greater global integration? Or are we going to have a turning point whereby we all now start thinking that it's better for us to have uh, unilateral, uh, more isolationist p policies. This reminds me of uh, the situation almost a hundred years ago, just before the uh, Great Depression. Uh, at that point in time, it was the same uh, fork on the road that we have to confront. Do we go for an open rule-based system, or do we end up with more unilateral isolationist pro policies? Singapore, of course, a very open economy, highly dependent on trade, mm. highly dependent on the U.S. as well as China. Mm. Do you see Singapore getting caught between the two countries having to decide which way to turn? Yeah. Singapore's policy is that we want to remain plugged in with both the U.S. and the Chinese uh, economic ecosystem. I don't think we want to be in the position whereby we are only dealing with one and not the other. And I believe this is the same position for the rest of the Asian countries as well. Everybody wants Isn't to Isn't it possible, in. though, at some point, sooner or later, Singapore and the rest of Southeast Asia may have to decide mm. which ally to go with? I think that will be a false choice for Singapore. Our role is to keep asking ourselves how can we value add to China and the U.S. at the same time. Uh, so we play in a space whereby we want to remain uh, neutral, remain open, so that this is a place where U.S., China, Europe can come, be engaged and conduct uh, productive economic activities. And I think that's how we position ourselves. So if you look at the uncertainties around the world, Actually, it's an opportunity for Singapore to distinguish ourselves because first, we have the long-term stability, the pro-business environment, the neutral position whereby people can come here and be engaged. And the strong intellectual property protection regime that we have, uh, I think the skill sets of our workers, I think these are all good qualities that if we get the fundamentals right, we will ride out the short-term challenges and position ourselves for the long haul.